of those desired plants everybody's looking for in their landscapes. One thing with roses, they are known to have some of those nasty rots and spots. Kevin Corris, a graduate student in the Department of Plant Pathology, is going to discuss the symptomology of two of the most common rose diseases that we see throughout Nebraska every year. The two diseases I'm going to talk to you about today are black spot of rose and rose rust. Now, early June is when we're going to see both of these diseases appear, and the diseases are favored by moist conditions. Black spot of rose, as the name implies, will start out as a black spot on the upper side of the leaf. These black spots are usually circular uh, and are small, anywhere between 2 and 12 millimeters in diameter. Now, disease progress with black spot will start with the lower leaves of the plant and work its way up to the top. Black spot is a residue-borne disease, which means that it survives our winters in the stems and the leaves that are on the ground. And in the spring, when the rain falls, it splashes the disease up onto the plant. Then you get this bottom-to-top movement. Rose rust, like black spot of rose, also starts with the lower leaves of the plant and works its way up. Rose rust, however, uh, starts as small, almost freckles on the upper side of the leaf that are yellow. But as the disease progresses, when you turn that leaf over, you're going to see the orange pustules of the ascospores. It's most common to see both of these diseases occur on the leaves. However, both can also infect the stems and the petioles. Now that we've actually identified what is actually going on with your roses, the next step is determining what management strategies do I need to do to control the disease that's already here or how to prevent it from even developing in your rose bed. The nice thing for both of these diseases, black spot and rose rust, is we're actually going to use the very same techniques for both of them. And the first step with all these diseases is really sanitation. We need to be cleaning up our rose beds in the fall, removing all those dead leaves, cutting out the dead canes, different components like that. But once we're in the season, as you're starting to see that disease develop, pruning out those really infected leaves that are very severely infected either with black spot or rose to reduce the inoculum load will really help reduce the amount of disease we're going to see further throughout the year. The other big component is these are spores that are moved with water. So preventing sprinkler irrigation, we want to make sure we're watering our roses from the bottom. So either using circle hoses or just putting the hose directly to the base of the rose to prevent that water splash. The other big thing, placement of our plants. If we are able to place a rose in an area that can get good morning sun, dry off that dew, it would also help reduce the amount of disease development. The other thing to help encourage drying out is pruning out our roses, making sure we don't have too many canes that isn't real thick in there. So if we prune it out, we're able to get better airflow in there, leaves will dry out, we won't get as much disease. Final resort, fungicide use. With both of these diseases, if you're going to use a fungicide, depending on the label and the product that you're using, which you need to look at very carefully, it's either a 7, 14, or 21 day reapplication period. A lot of times you're going to start from the time you start seeing disease and have to go all summer long. One other advantage we have for black spot that I haven't mentioned yet is resistant varieties. There are resistant cultivars of roses available out there for black spot. So if you're going to be renovating a new bed, want to be introducing some new roses to the area, pick a variety that is resistant to black spot so you can avoid that fungicide application. If you use a combination of all these management strategies, you're really going to reduce the amount of disease and possibly eliminate all disease from your rose bed. So you're going to have beautiful, healthy roses year in and year out.